Well, at this time, I'd like to share with you a message I've called Our Hope in Resurrection. And so I would like to just take a brief look at Acts chapter 1. So from Acts chapter 1, we actually read about the ascension of Christ into heaven. And if you know that Luke is the author of Acts, and he basically continues almost, in a way, his gospel in a historic type of setting. As, as Luke is listing, first of all, the resurrection of Christ, and then he talks about how the early church came together. We read about those that came to know Christ as Messiah, the Lord, in Acts chapter 2, and the coming of the Holy Spirit there. Then we read on about how Peter uh, began his ministry, mostly to the Jews. And then we're introduced to Paul, and probably two-thirds of Acts is written about the life of Paul and the great ministry and apostleship that he had. So just we're going to read from 9 down to uh, verse 11, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Well, I have to tell you that that passage from verse 11 is just one of the greatest promises in Scripture about Christ's resurrection and his going then into heaven and the promise of him ascending. I have about a three-inch book uh, by Josh McDowell, and also his son helped him on this book. And I, it's written in what's called an, a, sort of an apologetic form. And one of the thick chapters in that book is on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there are so many types of ideas that people have offered up about what happened to Christ. You'd be amazed. People have put forth all types of things. Some have suggested that Christ was not really dead and that he was taken to the th tomb and he was unconscious and a day or two later he just came out of that unconscious state and then he was alive. Well, and others suggest that the body was hidden by someone and that he in fact never uh, arose at all. And they have some different ideas about how he uh, his body was hidden. There are upwards to about 10, 11 different ideas that people have tried to put forth just to get around this very simple statement that Jesus has risen and that he ascended into heaven and will come back and very importantly to remind ourselves, he is alive today. Hallelujah. He is in heaven today. It is real. And he is with the Heavenly Father just now. Now, this is without question the greatest event in human history. Nothing can compare to the event that we are thinking about today celebrating, having faith in, and believing. All the prior years, from Adam right up through Abraham and Moses and David, the Israelites and all their activities, all the prior years of the Old Testament pointed over and over to Jesus Christ the Messiah coming and he being the sacrifice for us. And all the years since the resurrection 
reflect on him rising from the dead and ascending into heaven. And as you go on through Acts, the amazing thing about Paul's ministry is he said that he preached one thing, and that was Jesus Christ, him crucified and risen from the dead. Paul didn't vary from that message hardly at all. He just wanted to get across because there were a whole lot of people even then that was questioning or didn't know that Jesus had risen from the grave. And so Paul, as he advanced and through, through the greater Asia area there, uh, he was he's spreading that message. And he was telling the people all over, Jesus raising from the dead and being alive today is our only hope for eternal life. It's just how important it is. There is no other way. Peter said that there is no other name given under heaven by which a person might be saved. Don't let anybody talk you in to many paths to heaven outside of Jesus Christ the Lord. And people are beginning to do that. Talk about that more and more. And think about that. The Bible says plainly, what if a good person gains the whole world? Now think of that statement. Who's going to gain the whole world? No one. Many people have tried, but no one's going to gain the whole world. But the Bible says, if a person did gain the whole world, as impossible as that seems, even if they did, and lose their own soul, what would it profit? What would a person give in exchange for their soul? And unfortunately today, millions and millions of people have not accepted the free gift of salvation. They have not, in their hearts and minds, embraced that Christ paid the price on the cross for us. And then, he being found sinless, great, the grave could not hold him. And so, he was resurrected. And so, we have this free gift of salvation. With the resurrection of Jesus, we gained invaluable things for eternal life. But then I want us to think about the things that we have gained from the resurrection for our lives today. What difference does it make that Christ arose from the dead for us today? This, this April the 4th and of 2021. What difference does it make in our lives this morning as we're meeting here at Oakdale? So often I come around the corner here on Sunday morning and I just want to sing uh, about the church in the Dale and the church in Oakdale. And I, the, even this morning if we came down the road, I said, there's the little church in the Dale. And it's a joy for us to come here. Well, as we're gathered together today, what is our hope in the resurrection for today? Well, one of the things that the resurrection does for me is that I live in a peace that I cannot obtain any other way than through Christ. We're seeking peace in the world. Nations have been striving after peace for years. I think it was the Second World War that was called the war that would end all wars. Well, we know how that has gone. But Jesus Christ did what is required to bring us peace in our hearts. Ask ourselves for a moment, how do people who doesn't know the Lord as their savior, how do they ever get to a place of peace? With the uncertainty in our lives today that we cannot escape. And I'm hearing more ministers and more when they're starting to preach, saying things like, this world is as bad as it's ever been. I'm not sure about that. I read a lot of things in history that seems pretty bad. But 
all of us at least can agree that there's a lot of distressful activities and distressful things going on not only in our own nation wasn't there another shooting just in the last day or two about three in just the past uh, week or two you know i am disturbed by this i think what if that was my family out there and members of my own family was listed as some that were killed like some families have today and i pause and try to think to myself what are these families going through today think of the grief and the horror that they have from experiencing lo the loss of loved ones how can people ignore the message of peace that Jesus Christ gives to us? And people fill their lives with all types of other things. And I have to admit that I can be drawn to some of these other things. Oh, I have a wish list of material things. I'd like to have this, and I'd like to have this, and after I get that, I'd like to have this, and after I get all that, I'd like to have this and this. I could draw up a long list of things. But you know, I could acquire all those things. None of them can even begin to compare with the peace I have in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I could do exciting travels and trips. I could have other possessions. But to my experience so far, now, these things don't bring the deep peace that I'm really searching for. In my move to West Virginia from Virginia, I think to myself, how could anybody have more stuff than I have? I'm telling you, there's boxes everywhere, there's things everywhere, and I told my wife, I think we just bring the bed and the freezer over and everything else that's over there we just get rid of. We don't need any more. The house is full. And you know, all those things that have stacked up around us, all the, the things that I've collected in my life, good grief, I must have a hundred hats. What do I need a hundred hats for? You know what, where they're at? They're in a box in the closet. And if I don't get them out once in a while, I forget I even have them. And oh, I have gone on uh, all types of, of uh, efforts I guess you'd say to collect things I used to collect stickers like a little kid I collected stickers from all kinds of companies well what good are they they're in a big plastic bag and that's my bag of stickers and you better not touch them because you know these stickers had to go in a special box mark you know Randy stickers uh, another box Randy's hats uh, there was boxes of all kinds that had Randy's books, Randy's things. I thought to myself, does anybody else have anything in this house but me? And, you know, so we, we like to put all these things around us that comfort us and maybe give us peace. You know, maybe people do be believe that one day they will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's a dangerous belief. We're not promised even two minutes before we die to say a prayer to the Lord to save my soul, repent of our sins. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't put in the back of our minds that, well, one day, uh, you know, I'm in my early 60s, so I probably got, and I even... Um, hesitate to say that I can't say how many years I got how many days I got hours even minutes I can't put off something that I want to have between God my Savior and me why would I want to put something like that off what would I hope to gain? Is there any peace I could have by delaying to grow in the Lord? You know, not only do we do that with salvation, sometimes Christians also do that with their Christian growth. You know, we have some things that the, the Lord is 
could do in our lives and many times we're very very possibly saying well uh, not today Lord but maybe someday maybe someday when I was in my 20s I, I thought that maybe God was calling me to be a pastor but for a long while I, I thought well maybe someday Maybe someday, but not today, Lord. Uh, I have this job, and I want to keep it. And I know that the ministry would have some challenges and sacrifices, so maybe one day I'll be up to doing that. But not today, Lord. Not today. Well, I tell you, what is the reason sometimes we say not today? How could we justify and actually account this is why not today this is why i don't want to make a commitment to the church for anything that lasts more than a week or so because i have other things and how could we list those out you know i have a, a many people uh, that you might ask to do something in church and they might say well i might if if i don't have anything else it's like there's these list of things here that uh, I, I want to keep my options open for. So I can't make a commitment. Now, that takes a lot of time. And I, I just don't have that kind of time. What, what kind of things have we put in front of serving the Lord? With Christ's resurrection, he's become the first fruits of those that will live eternally. He is our demonstration of how we will be resurrected now one or two things is going to happen to usher us into the presence of the Lord this is it every one of us here one of two things will happen if we're a child of God today either we may pass on from this life and if we pass away in this life before Christ comes when we draw our last breath, or even as we're drawing it, we will immediately come into the presence of the Lord at that time. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's talking about our spirit. So we immediately be in presence with the Lord. You know when that happens, you'll never be separated from God again. Our spirits will come immediately before the Lord in heaven at that time. Angels will be like pallbearers will escort us into heaven. Now that's one way. We might come into the presence of God. What's the second way? The second way is this. Jesus could return while we are alive. Don't push the rapture off in infinity in the future somewhere a long time ago or uh, from now. The rapture could happen today. And if the rapture happens, the Bible says, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord. That is the rapture. Now, the word rapture is no place in the King James Version of the Bible. But the idea of the rapturous return to heaven is there. And it's also in Revelation as well. And so we are going to come into the presence of the lord we have a security right now by the resurrection of jesus christ you know uh, many christians like to de debate what uh, some call once saved always saved i i never liked that phrase so much but yet there is one thing that i do like a lot and that is eternal security because when the Lord saves our soul I personally believe from scripture that we remain saved no matter what and nothing can take us out of the hand of Christ all anxiety is eternally gone concerning death or the end of our lives I'm glad that I don't live with an anxiety that within the next 20, 25 years, or the next two days, or whenever it is, that I'm going to die. That doesn't give me an anxiety. There was a TV minister 
I saw, I believe it was Jer David Jeremiah, who was preaching a sermon about being afraid to die. I didn't watch it. I, I wouldn't mind to watch it. But I hope that none of us here today are afraid to die. I pray that we don't live with anxiety in the midst of earthly turmoil. My peace remains intact. Now, I say that rather boldly, standing here, because my life at this time is, praise to the Lord, is not in a lot of turmoil to what I, as to what I would describe as turmoil. Many people's lives are. But I pray that even in the, the most earthly turmoil I could have, I would have a peace that remains in Christ the Lord because he is risen today. I look for his return with anticipation. It would be the greatest twinkling of an eye moment ever. Now I can work and share the good news of the gospel. It's a joyful thing to have an answer to the end of life questions. And not only do I have a peace that comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I can also share that peace to other people. You know the one of the greatest ways you can share the gospel? A great way is talking, of course. Don't discredit a word at the right time to speak to someone as whether they know Christ or not. I'm not discrediting that one bit, but I do want to elevate something else. You know, one of the greatest ways you can be a witness to Christ, just act like a Christian. Just act like a Christian. When I was out there driving a the truck some, which I did through the 20 years at Bride Range, I put on my cowboy hat, I put on my denim shirt or flannel shirt, blue jeans. I never got in the cowboy boots. Couldn't wear them very well. But I get out there, and I mean, I'm driving the old truck down the road. And if you'd look in the window of that truck, I'm singing the song, I've got friends in low places, and where the whiskey flows, and the beer chases my blues away. See, I got that song memorized. You know how I could still be a Christian and witness? I could be in a long line of truck drivers who were getting all mad about the time it was taken and they, when they're going to get out of here and what are they doing back there in this whole line and they're just fussing and carrying on. And, and uh, I'm just kind of saying, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing I can speed up about it. I might as well just try to keep calm and get out of here when I do. And get up to the window. And the guy behind the counter says, what's wrong with you? I said, what? He said, what's wrong with you? He said, all those guys are fussing, carrying on, hooping and hollering. He said, you, you haven't said a thing. And I said to him, and I didn't real, uh, often just tell someone right off the bat that I was a preacher. Not that I didn't care to, I'm glad to. But this time, I actually said to him, I said, you know, I'm a preacher. You know what he said back to me? He said, I can see that. And when he said that back to me, I said, sir, you just paid me one of the greatest compliments you could ever pay me. You said you could see that I'm a Christian. And that fellow was impressed from there on in. Whenever I saw him, he was at a facility down in Washington, D.C., Every time I saw him, uh, we just knew that we had talked about Christ and being a Christian. I want to tell you something about sharing the peace of Christ with other people. Sometimes we're afraid to do it. Let me just remind you this. I don't know what time it is. It might be 7.30 for one. <laughs> Let me just remind you this. More people will be glad that you shared with them than not. 
I can guarantee you. Now, I can't give you a percentage. I cannot say here today that 99 out of 100 will be glad. I can't say that, but I'm telling you from my own experience and the times that I have ever shared Christ or tried to be a Christian example in front of someone, it actually delights people. And you will be surprised if you let them see the peace in you, how much they will hunger after what you've got. And what do we have? We have the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness for sins. Eternal life. Salvation. Now, in addition to the peace that I have from Christ's resurrection, I also have his presence with me. You know, the Lord is always with me wherever I go. It don't matter if you're out there on the highway 100 miles from the nearest town. Christ is with you at that point in time. And you might need him at any time. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. He guides my life from one day to the next. If I will be mindful of what he's saying to me. Uncertainties are navigated not because of my wisdom. Not because any advantage that I have. But because the Holy Spirit guides me step by step. His presence is with us. How many times, I got more glasses up here than I know what to do with. <laughs> These are yours, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought I had a pair on. <laughs> How many times have you felt alone except for knowing that Jesus is with you? I tell you, when I was in the hospital, it was a different experience than I've ever had before in my life. I was in... Uh, therapy, I tell you, therapy makes me shiver. It's not fun. And there was times when I felt alone, trying to make one step after another. And I can assure you that at some of those times, I paused and said a prayer, Lord, you're with me. Help me to make one more step. Help me to make one more step. I wanted to get better. And I felt that it was going to take work. And the Lord was with me to help me do it. And I remember being in Haiti. Hey, we might go to Guatemala. Oh, some of you have already been there. That's exciting. When I was in Haiti, some of the most exciting times ever in my spiritual life. But some of the most scary, too. There was a few nights I prayed, Lord, just get us out here. I'm not sure. And Haiti's a peaceful place. It's, it's not a place where you have to fear for your life or anything. At least I didn't. The people of Haiti have good hearts. When I've been on a job before, you know you don't always get to pick, pick the people you work with. And sometimes you look at some guys around the job, why did I get put with these guys? It can be a lonely place. But Jesus can be there with you during those times. Jesus' presence in this life is a great gift. Always be thankful that he is with us. Always have a prayerful attitude as if he's right beside us. Feel his presence when you read the scripture. That's one of the greatest places I feel the presence of the Lord. When I read the Bible and I, I just think this is God's message for me right now. And I, I try to personalize it. Don't read the Bible as if you're just reading to someone else. Read the Bible as if you're reading to yourself. This is what it's saying to us. And I tell you, when we pray together, we have to feel the presence of the Lord. He is there. I've been blessed with three sons. And raising three sons has been just one of the greatest privileges of my life and Christy's life. I've always appreciated how that being in my presence seemed to be all they needed to be secure. Whether we're walking in the mall or in town somewhere on the street or whether we're walking from the church to the house, I noticed my boys would grab from my hand. You know, and they're little like this. And I just remember 
them grabbing for my hand. And I thought a few times on walking across the driveway. You know, it's a wonderful thing when your son reaches out to grab your hand. You see, I can be there for them. I feel the same way with Jesus. When I'm at places where I feel alone, I want to reach out and I want to find his hand somewhere. Jesus is alive with us today and throughout eternity. Well, lastly, and this better be the last thing. Lastly, in addition to his peace, in addition to his presence, I also have his promises. And I tell you, the promises of the Bible and of Christ the Lord is real to me. I embrace them. The angels made the prophecy right here in Acts where it says this same Jesus will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. That is a promise to us in Scripture. I've heard how many promises there are in the Bible. I forget the number. I'm sure it's in the thousands. This is the greatest reality that I have in my life. You know, I can't not predict that I'll be alive this evening at 6 o'clock. I cannot tell you that. I can't predict who's going to win the baseball game tomorrow. I, I cannot predict what the weather will be on Monday and Tuesday. I hear it's going to warm up this week, but I would never tell you that because I don't know. I can't predict it. I can't really predict, and it's amazing how little we have control of in our own lives. Most of the things I just end up reacting to because I really can't predict it. But the only thing that I am absolutely certain of, and that is Christ has promised me so many things, and I can be certain of every single one, especially in his return. Jesus might be returning today or any day. Many are not expecting it. But 1 Thessalonians 4 through uh, 13 through 18 says the Lord shall descend with the trumpet and the sound of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise. All Christians alive will rise up and be raptured. They shall remain with the Lord forever. These are the promises that you have today. While we celebrate today the resurrection of Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you, along with me, that all of us have the peace that passes understanding that's greater than anything else in my heart. Have the assurance of his presence with you and me wherever we go. As I walk out of this church today, I don't leave the presence of the Lord in here. He goes with me. He gets in the car and he's riding with me there. And then I want you to realize this because you really need it. And that's all of his promises. Go back to scripture occasionally. And just renew yourself with the knowledge of the promises of God. You'll see how wonderful his presence is in our lives let me pray well Lord I've shared some things but I've only scratched the surface of how great it is to know that you are risen today I'm thankful that we come out to this service this morning a little early and we just contemplated for a little bit what it is that you have resurrected you are living now in addition to the eternal life that you have provided for us lord you have given us many great and wonderful things today in our present life just as well and i pray that everyone here will just be renewed in the knowledge of the risen lord today and that you will just uh, just Revive us, maybe even to that joy of salvation that we once had when we first were saved. It's just as real now as then. 
I thank you for all that. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.